This video is for the Project Management for Technology course, and it's a supplement to Chapter 5 entitled AON Network Diagram. I'm Dr. Renault at Shawnee State University, and I'll be taking you through this video lecture. The letters AON on the title of the presentation stand for Activity on Node, and it's one of two types of network diagrams that I'll be covering in this course. In addition to how to draw an AON diagram, I'm going to talk about finding and marking the critical path of a network diagram. In an activity on node diagram, we will place each task of the activity in the node or in the circle or whatever shape we use for the node, and we will connect the nodes with arrows to show their dependency. Um, this works really well for start or finish, finish to start relationships. We also may need to add a start or end node if we have multiple tasks that can start or end a project, but it's optional and may be left out if we have a, a network that we're diagramming that does not have multiple tasks at the start or multiple tasks that can finish. Um, and you'll see you'll see what I mean as as we dive into and get started doing a couple of the diagrams. Let's start with a very simple activity on node diagram. Above my head, you can see that we have a list of five tasks, and I've assigned each task a letter just to make it easy to understand the task. And I've defined the predecessors or prerequisites or tasks that have to be finished before we can start the next task. So you can see that task A has no predecessors and can be started at the beginning of the project. Tasks B and C must wait until task A finishes. Task D follows task C, and task E follows task B and D. We look at again the definition of the of the tasks, the work breakdown structure in a in a project and its and their prerequisites. We can see the diagram over here and and it works exactly that way. You can see that node A, task A is followed by tasks B and C that D must follow C and that E cannot be started until B and D are done, and you can tell that by the arrows. The network diagram in the previous slide was created using a, uh, an online and a downloadable uh, drawing tool called draw.io, and if you want to open it up in your web browser, you can just go to draw.io, the domain, and uh, the application will start in your browser. You can also download a version that runs locally on your computer, either for Windows, Mac, Linux. Um, I think there's even a Chrome version. So the Draw.io program is a business graphics program. It's not a, a drawing program. It's not a program for artistic endeavors. It's a program for communication. And the cool thing about Draw.io, and there's a an introduction to draw io on another another presentation that uh, once you connect two nodes together with an arrow if you move a node the arrows will stay connected and it makes designing and drawing flowcharts entity relationship diagrams network diagrams and lots of other diagrams so much easier um, once you get the diagram you want and get it the way you want it you can go up to the top menu and file export and export it as a graphics file, either a SVG or a PNG or a JPG. And then you can import that diagram into your presentations, into your slideshows, into your uh, word processing documents, or email that to somebody who doesn't have access to the software or that you don't want them to be able to change it, give them a read-only copy of it. But Draw.io is a great program, and you'll see it in lots of my classes. 
So let's look at a second project, a second network of, of tasks with their predecessors. But notice that this one is a little different because tasks A and B neither have prerequisites. So task A could be started at the beginning, task B could be started at the beginning, or they could be started simultaneously if you stop and think about the way this project works. Because of that ambiguous start, there's no clear start, I put a special node over on the far end called start. And you can see that start is kind of a, of a dummy node, but it's a node that says start here, and we can then go once we start to A or B or both at the same time, and they don't have prerequisites. Let's look that C has a prerequisite of A and B, and you can see that you've got to finish A and B to be able to get to C. You see that D has a prerequisite of B, so we don't even have to have started A. We could do B, D first before we jump up to A, C if we want it, if that was the way we wanted to sequence our tasks. Um, but you can't start C until both A and B are finished, and you can't start E until C and D are finished. So E is dependent upon literally all of the tasks because C is dependent upon A and B, D is dependent upon B, and E is dependent upon C and D. And you can see how that works kind of here in this activity on node network diagram with an ambiguous start. Now we're going to add one more little bit of complexity to our network diagram, and that is in each of the nodes, I'm going to add a space and then the duration of the task. So you can see that A takes three units of time, and I didn't specify whether this duration was days or hours, but you can see that A takes three and B takes seven. Um, by putting the numbers on the diagram, either with a space between it or a space dash space or by putting a carriage return so the number is under the letter. That's really personal preference and preference of your project manager, PMO, scheduler, however they would like it seen. But um, this is the way I'm doing it for you. So by adding the task durations, you can start to see how long each of the duration, each how long each of the paths through your network are going to take. So what we did here is we went through each of the three different paths through the network. You stop and think about this as a forest. There are three ways. You can go ABF, you can go ACDF, or you can go ACEF to get from start to finish in this project, in this network of, of tasks. What I did was down over here, I added up the total length of the durations for each of the paths. You can see that A plus B plus F is 13, ACDF is 12, ACEF would be 11. The critical path is the path with the longest duration. And we call that the critical path because if any task along the critical path has to be a little longer, then the entire project gets to be longer. Um, ACDF has what's called slack of one, that it can move back and forth by one without affecting the rest of the project. And this, the path ACEF actually can be done two units of time quicker than the rest of the project, potentially. This concludes my brief video on activity on node diagrams, network diagrams. I'd like to say thank you for watching. This presentation is copyright 2020 by James M. Renault, Ph.D. You can contact me at jrenault at shawnee.edu. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial share-alike, 4.0 international license. And again, thanks for watching.